Jay, come. This is the time for you the, to share the word. We want to hear what God has God has prepared for us this morning through through you. So let's let's pray before we start hearing the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so glad that we can have Jesus as our friend, our Savior. That He died. He resurrected and He is coming again to take us home. 
bless AJ as he shares, he shares the word and because we want to hear your word this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everybody. And uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, thank you, Praise Team, for that awesome song. It's a special weekend. Tomorrow we're uh, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it's a great thing to, to reflect on and think about. Today, I actually wanted to share a message that's probably going to be relatable to everyone here today. And I just want to say that every time that I prepare a sermon, usually when I'm putting it together, oftentimes God will probably put a person or certain people in my head. I don't know if, Pastor, the same thing happens to you. And I start to really think about it. Sometimes it's a friend. Sometimes it's a member of church. And uh, some people that I really had in my head uh, as I was preparing this sermon uh, was the leaders of the spot. If you guys haven't been to the spot, um, I just want to say please go to our, our English, our youth service. It's on Fridays. Um, Pastor Sammy's leading us. And it's been such a great group of leaders coming together. I really praise God for that and thank Pastor Sammy um, for just uh, giving us like such a what's the word, just making us capable of being able to do that. So I want to say thank you to Pastor for that, and hopefully you guys can all make it out. So I want to go ahead and get right into it and ask a question to everyone that's here today. As you can see, the sermon title is Broken Hearted. Broken Hearted. Has anyone here ever had their heart broken? Anyone? Okay. Some people were raising our hands. Um, when we think about having our heart broken, and it doesn't always just have to be about romantic relationships and things like that. It could be anything in life, although mainly it's usually referring to that or maybe a romantic relationship. But it can be anything in life. There's many times that we have our hearts broken and go through something. It can be with relationships. It could be just with life situations, something that we go through. It could be with our jobs. It could be even with our friendships. And if you've gone through something like that before, then you know that being brokenhearted is a tough feeling to go through. Sometimes, in fact, it can be so hard, it can be so emotional for us that we actually feel real pain, physical pain in our hearts. We maybe start to feel pain in the pit of our stomach. We start to feel welling up inside our throat. It's something incredibly hard for us. So we ask, why then would God allow for us to go through something like that? And a lot of times, something that I think is that when God allows us to go through situations where we're brokenhearted, it's because, in a way, it actually makes us more like Him. You know, God is one who knows suffering. God is somebody who has to suffer a lot. Not only when He was here on this earth, when Christ was here on this earth, did He do a lot of suffering, but throughout all time, throughout all eternity, as long ever since the fall of man, has God been suffering brokenheartedness getting rejected constantly, loving millions and millions of people that aren't going to love you back, uh, being rejected. But the same way that God overcomes, the same way that God will come back from anything, when we go through brokenheartedness and we struggle with things in our past, giving it to Him and allowing Him to change us and restore us is what we must do. Because, you know, the way that we deal with our brokenheartedness and our pains of the past always has a direct effect on your future. And so today I wanted to go ahead and share the story of someone whose story is rooted in brokenheartedness, and that is the story of a man named Samson. So if you guys want to go with me in your Bibles to Judges, we're going to be looking at Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13, if you don't have your Bibles, it's going to be up on the screen. And before we get into the story, we want to talk about the birth of Samson because this is an important thing to look at. And Judges chapter 13, verse 2, says this, A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink and that you do not eat anything unclean. 
You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Amen. And so what you see right from the beginning, when the story of Samson, when we look at this story, almost any story in the Bible, really, we need to understand that this story isn't just about Samson. It's also about you and me. You see, we're all like Samson. And as we see in this story, Samson was born with a purpose. How many stories in the Bible have we known of a woman who cannot even have a child and God blesses her? And that was the case of Samson's mother, And Samson was born. He was to be a Nazarite. There was many things in his vow to God that he was supposed to be. Never could his hair be cut. He was never supposed to touch the uh, the, uh, dead body or anything dead. He was never even supposed to come in contact with, never to drink alcohol. And it's interesting to know all the things that Samson was purposed for because most of us probably know the story, but do you think that Samson kept his vow and did all the things that he was supposed to do? Or did he probably go against them? He went against them. And many times we go against them as well, and it affects our story. But as we look to what happened now, we uh, we see the story of Samson's parents. He's born, and Samson's story really begins in chapter 14. And this is the first thing that we read about Samson and his story. And here's what it says, Judges 14. It says, Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned... He said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. Anyone here ever brought someone home to mom and dad and they're just like, "Uh, are you sure? Anyone? No, no. My mom is not ashamed to clown me on some of my bad decisions in the past. I'm not going to lie. And here we see Samson. Why is this such a key part of Samson's story? And why is it so interesting? He's wanting to get a wife from the Philistines. You see, Samson's greatest overall purpose that it says right in the Bible is that he was meant to lead Israel against the Philistines and actually take them down like a warrior, like a general. But here we see Samson now going to actually collect or get a wife from the Philistines. And we see that him doing that is going to lead to a lot of interesting things that happen because guess what? He has this relationship with this woman and it actually becomes successful, he actually decides to marry her. But what happens? You see, one day he's going to visit her and he gets attacked by a lion. Samson gets attacked by a lion. So you guys, if you've ever been attacked by a lion, you know how intense that could be. Exactly, you know. So naturally, just like any of us would do when we get attacked by a lion, Samson just grabbed him by the jaw and just ripped the lion in half. If some of us never heard the story of Samson, something that he had was of almost superhero-like strength. He had super strength. It was one of his greatest blessings from God. So he takes this lion, rips it in half, and goes on his way. As he's returning home one day, he passes by the body of that same lion. And the dead body of the lion, bees have now started swarming that dead body. And the lion's body is filled with honey. So what does Samson do? He actually goes right up to it. He's, he's like, yo, this is so awesome. Scoops out a bunch of honey from the dead lion's body and starts eating it. And then he goes home and gives some to his parents. And he didn't even tell them where the honey came from. Exactly. So his parents are happy. So they all return to the land of his to-be wife to start a week-long celebration for their marriage. And what's about to take place is Samson is about to experience three really big heartbreaks in one story, in one quick moment. You see, he was feeling so good about what he had done, destroying the lion, eating the honey, uh, just surviving, that to all the men that's there at their celebration, which is pretty much all her relatives and all her friends, 
he creates this riddle. And I didn't put it up on the top for you, but I want to read to you the riddle of what it is. He actually made a riddle about the lion and the honey. And he tells them, if you guys can figure this out, then I'm going to go ahead and give you a big gift. I'm going to give you all 30 of you, 30 garments of clothing. But if you can't figure out my riddle, then you have to give me 30 garments of clothing. And they say, okay, let's do it. Here's what the Bible says. Here's what the riddle says. It says, out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. Now, what I get from this is Samson may have been the greatest riddle writer of all time. Because we know that the Bible is written in Hebrew. So I don't know how in English that still rhymes. That I don't understand. But somehow he did it. And I don't understand how anyone would ever figure out that riddle. Unless you were walking with him on the path, how would you know that he killed a lion and there was honey inside its dead body? Makes no sense. There was no way these men were ever going to figure out this riddle. So what do they do? They go to his wife and they start pressuring her. And they tell her, you need to figure out what this riddle is, otherwise we're going to lose all this money on the 30 things of clothing we have to give for Samson. And they start pressuring her and pressuring her and pressuring her and using someone that he loves to try to get to him. And guess what? It works. Look what Samson's wife says to him during the festival of their marriage. This is in verses 16 and 17, Judges 14. Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even explained it to my father or mother, he replied. So why should I explain it to you? She cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day, he finally told her, because she continued to press him, she in turn explained the riddle to her people. Hmm. I'm sure that these verses now in this story is probably giving some of us a little bit of PTSD. Anyone, any, any of us have ever dealt or been with a manipulator or a liar? Have you ever been through something like that? In fact, is, is anyone here currently with a manipulator or a liar? You go ahead, just raise your hands. No, I'm just joking. Put your hand down, brother, please. No, please. <laughs> You know, you're going to be on the couch permanently. But see what's happening here. This is the first heartbreak that Samson goes through because guess what? She betrays him to her people. She goes and tells them the answer, and they turn around on him and use it against him. And Samson is so upset that guess what he does to get the 30 garments of clothing? He goes and kills 30 men, which sometimes we overlook how much of the crazy things that Samson would do but we see later that Samson decides to leave and says, and Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his best man. You see, Samson was so upset by what happened that he leaves his wife behind in her land and goes home, and his wife was given to his best man, which he did not know. So what happens after is that he decides to return to her, to take her back, and to forgive her. And here's what it says. Later on, at the same time, at the time of the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I'm going to my wife's room, but her father would not let him go in. I was so sure you hated her, he said, that I gave her to your companion. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. The second heartbreak that Samson goes through in a short amount of time is now feeling jealousy over who was supposed to be his wife. She was given to his best friend. So we're starting to see a pattern here that maybe you and me have gone through in our lives before. Samson gets a heartbreak, and then he overreacts and does something crazy. You see, once he got his heart broken again by finding out that his wife was now with his best man, he overreacts and does something crazy again. He decides that in order to get revenge, He's going to basically set fire to all the Philistines' crops, all their fields, and all of their, uh, their important crops and things of that nature. So he captures 300 foxes. I don't know how he thought of this. Ties their tails together in pairs and puts a torch in between their tails, which a torch is basically just like a flaming stick. And he lets those foxes tied together. He lets them off into the fields, burns all of their stuff down. And if any of us have ever overreacted, maybe when we get hurt, 
or just try to take revenge on somebody. There's always that split second when you're doing it where it kind of feels good. You're kind of like, you're letting off that steam. You're letting off that frustration and stress. But it never really pans out the way that we think it's going to. It usually actually becomes worse and, and ends up hurting us or making it more painful. And that's what happened. You see, the Philistines, when they found out what happened, they got extremely upset and they decided to take action. Then the Philistines said, who has done this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. You see, the third huge heartbreak that Samson went through is losing someone that he loved forever. In order to get revenge on Samson, they killed her and her father. So in all of these moments that Samson was trying to react to things that he's going through, having his heart broken, it continues to get worse and worse. And this is the origin story of Samson. You know, when you're reading comics and they talk about a villain's origin story or sometimes a hero's origin, this is Samson's origin story. This is really where it all started. Because in the moment that he thought he was going to be at his peak, he's getting married, he's going to be having the most happiness He's just going through the best thing ever. He actually goes through the worst. He has his heart broken three times. And what Samson goes on to do is what many of us do, is that we never actually deal with it. You see, the Bible says us that he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines for 20 years. So he never got married after wanting to be married. He just decides to end up doing his own thing for 20 years dealing with this heartbreak. Now, when you go right to the next chapter, look how it starts. Next chapter, very next verse. Samson went to Gaza, and there he saw a prostitute, and he went into her. So 20 years later, next thing we know, Samson's getting in there with a prostitute. So I don't know what you guys think, but the Bible only tells us he had his heart broken. 20 years pass, 20 years of him leading Israel, by the way. Next thing you know, he's in with a prostitute. And I don't know if you guys think that for those 20 years, Samson was probably just in his room praying, thinking about that heartbreak that he went through, but probably not. We can infer that if out of nowhere, Samson sees a prostitute, he likes her, he just goes to her. This is probably something he was used to. You see, because of those, what he went through 20 years before, he spent those 20 years not doing what God would want him to do, but rather just doing what he wanted to do. And so we see that the things that he went through have been unresolved until finally he found someone in his life that he actually wanted to be with. You see, Samson ended up meeting somebody that he fell in love with. It was shortly after this, and who knows what her name was? Delilah, exactly. He meets a woman that he's in love with, and he begins to spend a lot of time with her and basically just always be with her. But there was a problem. The Philistine leaders still wanted to kill Samson. So they go to her and offer her money and say, we're going to give you this money, but what you have to do is you need to find out the secret of Samson's strength so that we can kill him and that we can capture him. And what does she start to do? She starts trying to get his secrets out of him. Now, I hope you guys are listening and putting this together. You see, Samson's enemies are using a woman that he loves to try to find out his secret and get to him. Does that sound like a familiar story? It's the same story he went through 20 years before. The exact same thing. You see how messed up the enemy is? When he gets you once, when he breaks your heart, or when he finds a way to attack you and to hurt you, guess what? He'll do it right again. That's why it's so important when we go through these pains and these trials in life that rather than just keep it in, rather than just use what we're going through to go ahead and and react and just dwell in our sadness, that we give it to God, that we allow him to change us, to heal our broken hearts, to restore us. Because if we don't, the enemy's just gonna keep coming back with that same firepower. So if there's any of us today who are going through something, maybe we've been going through a certain pain for 20 years. Now is the time, today is the day to give it to God, to ask him to restore you. Even myself, I know there's things I've gone through that for years, you still sometimes think about, feel pain about. 
and Samson was the same way. You see, after trying over and over and over again to get his secret out, which was that he had never cut his hair, he actually tells her. He tells her his secret. I will lose all my strength and I won't be able to be the, the, the powerful person that I am if I cut my hair. And that night when he's sleeping, guess what happens? She cuts his hair. Here's what happens next. When Delilah saw, this is Judges 16, starting in verse 18. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep. Sorry, do you guys have that up there? The Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. I want you guys to see what's happening here. The story of Samson is definitely one of the most sad stories when it comes to the men of God or the leaders of God who had this great purpose. You see, Samson had this great purpose. He was supposed to take down the Philistines. He was supposed to be a leader. He was supposed to be a warrior. He was someone that everyone respected, everyone really liked pretty much. He was just, he was that guy. But early in his life, in his youth, he went through some heartbreak. And rather than giving it to God, being restored and moving forward, he let it dwell within him and it affected him and it ended up being his downfall. But I want you guys to look at the last verse up there and always remember this when you think of the story of Samson. You see, his strength was, came from his hair and they completely shaved it off. They left him with no hair and he lost all his strength. But even after his eyes being gouged out, even after being taken to prisoner, the Bible makes sure to let us know that God was already restoring him. His hair was already beginning to grow back. And even though if you've gone through everything that he went through at that time, you may think, well, what's so great about that? He already lost. But the Bible tells us that for a reason. You see, in the end, even though Samson went through a huge heartbreak, and praise him, if you guys want to start coming up, you can start coming up. God not only restored him, but God allowed for Samson to fulfill his purpose. You see, when Samson was there as a prisoner, this is what he said to the Lord that day. And this is in verse 28 through 30. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus, he killed many more when he died than when he lived. At the end of the day, when we read the story of Samson, there's something that we have to see, which is that, did he fulfill his purpose? He actually did. He actually did. At the end, when he took down the temple with him, although it killed him as well, all the Philistine leaders were there, all the rulers, and in that one move, 3,000 of them died, and it was very hard for the Philistines. And Samson fulfilled his purpose. But it's still a sad story. Because he who was supposed to be a hero ended up going through terrible pain and had to lose his life to fulfill his purpose. And there's a reason when we look at the story of Samson that God allows us to have these stories. And the reason is because 
just like Samson, we're all going to go through heartbreak in our lives. But God shares these stories with us so that we can make a decision, we can make a choice to not have to go down the same way that he did. Rather than us just giving all of our pain, all of our energy into doing what we want to do, we can actually turn to God and he will restore you. He will resurrect your broken heart and allow you to be everything that you're meant to be. So today, I just want to pray for anyone here who's either going through heartbreak or who went through heartbreak long ago, who might be struggling with certain things or who's just having a hard time letting it go. And I want to encourage you that look at this story and know that the same way God had a purpose for Samson, he has one for you. But you don't have to let the rest of your story be dictated by any of the heartbreak that you've gone through. God can heal us. Amen. He can restore us. He can change our story for the better so that we can have a happy ending, one that glorifies him and helps us to see him more. Amen. So I pray that everybody here today is willing to do that. If there's anything in your heart that you've been holding on to, give it to God. Let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you so much for this story, the story of Samson. Lord, I just ask that for anybody here today that's going through pains, pains of the past, heartbrokenness, anything like that, Lord God, that we not be like Samson and let it dwell with us for the next 20 years, Lord God. But instead, I ask that today, Lord, this place becomes a place of healing, Lord God, that people who have pain in their heart can feel your presence coming in and changing them, restoring them, giving them peace once again, giving them strength once again, letting them feel your presence once again and letting us be who you made us to be, Lord God. Lord, we give this to you. We give our pain to you. We give everything that we have to you, Lord God. And we ask us that you give us strength and make us more like you. We thank you for your love, for always being with us and for your word and always guiding us, Lord God. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing now and now. We're going to tell Jesus that we believe that his victory is our victory. So all stand up as we sing, as we worship, as we say we believe that the victory is ours in Jesus Christ. The world may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail.
because he already won. He's the winner. He is our victory. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. That's right. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Jesus, thank you, AJ, for that powerful message. We know that Jesus, you are the one that we can trust our hearts. So thank you for blessing us. Thank you for all that you do, for the sacrifice you made, even though that we don't deserve it. You have loved us since the beginning of the world, and we receive that love with gratitude. And we declare right now that we are willing to follow you and to live for you. And we know that as we walk with you, you will heal anything that's broken. So that your light can shine through us. And we can learn, learn to love the world as well as you love the world. Thank you for that. Right now we ask you to bless our tithes and offerings. We put them in your hands and I know that you will bless what's left in our pockets. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. And now um, get ready for the Sabbath school. You can follow the signs if you don't know. And um, ask any of the deacons or any one of us. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We are so glad that you were able to be here with us. We have a few announcements to give you this morning. Sammy, what's our first announcement? Well, the first one is that this Friday, April 5th, there won't be the spot that we usually have on Fridays. There's a youth program on Fridays in our first building. We won't have the spot this Friday because we will be here supporting the program called Impacto Orlando, um, which we're gonna have this Friday. Uh, I'm gonna, it starts today and then it continues on next Friday, then next Saturday in the morning and then in the evening we will have a concert. So just keep in mind that next Friday there won't be any spot. Yeah, so this program, um Impacto Orlando is a Spanish program. So if you do know Spanish, well, you're welcome to attend those services as well. 
Um, so we also want to announce the open gym nights that we have. We have open gym tonight, eight o'clock in the school's gym, and also every Thursday at seven thirty, seven thirty to ten thirty, we have um, open gym. We play volleyball. So if you like to play volleyball or you just like to hang out and make some friends, you are welcome to join us as well. These are all the announcements for today. Thank you so much for coming to worship with us, and we are going to be going to our Sabbath school classes mm-hmm. now. So if you are not sure where to go, there are some signs outside to lead you, or you can speak to any of us, and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you.